Hi, I'm Neil and uh, we're going to do a bit of uh, practice with processing today. Uh, I'm going to walk through a uh, processing a photo that uh, I took a couple of months back in Tasmania in the uh, the northwest coast when we were staying there on holiday in an uh, area called Boat Harbour. And uh, this is one of the photos I took there um, down on some of the rocky lava uh, coastline. Uh, and as you can see this photo needs a bit of work and I thought I'd uh, talk you through while I was processing it so you can see some of the techniques I use. Uh, now this is just the way I do things, it's my own personal preference. Uh, it's not necessarily the way that you should do things, but uh, I thought having a look at my um, process might help you with your own uh, way of processing photos. Now I usually like to start with fixing the things that are most obviously broken first and then narrowing things down so you get closer to the photo that you want. So the most obvious thing with this, this photo is that the horizon is, is quite badly tilted. So we're going to go into the crop tool. Now from there we can choose this uh, straighten tool which is a nice little symbol of a, um, a spirit level so it helps you recognize what it is. You click on that, it picks it up and you get to a point that you know is vertical or horizontal and you click on that horizontal line and drag a line out and you can move this up and down you can see the line that's coming there and you can align that with the horizon and when you let go it'll straighten to that line. Now as you can see we're going to lose a fair bit around the edges of this photo but uh, it's more important to have a straight horizon than keeping all the stuff in the photo. Now we can drag it left and right a little bit to a bit of wiggle room here so we choose for our composition what, what works best and I think I'll leave it there because we've got this nice little outcropping here on the cross of the one-thirds line on the intersection of the one-thirds line so we'll just hit enter and that uh, locks that in. Now at the moment I've got displayed up here the information about the photo. I've got the uh, XF data, the file name and the, the settings of the camera. That's often handy to just have a look at so that you can know what you're working with. But I'm just going to turn that off so it's not too distracting right now. Now, um, there's a lot of detail in this photo. It's a very deep depth of field, focused from all the way to the horizon to pretty close up front. Um, so you don't need to worry too much about depth of field tweaking in this one. Uh, it's just a little bit blurry at the front, but you can forgive that, you don't need to worry. I think the next thing that we want to do with this is to actually just increase the vibrance. I like having uh, photos, particularly with uh, nature photos, looking very punchy, very bright uh, colors. And I think this one will do well. Now, there's not a lot of color in this photo. Most of it's coming from the blue sky and the green and the trees here. Everything else is sort of grayish yellow. And we've got a bit of yellow coming through on some of these rocks, and that's how it was at the time. But uh, we might tweak the color balance in a moment. But uh, first thing I want to do next is just see if we can't push these colors a little bit further and see if it doesn't go too far. And uh, that might be a bit too far for some people's taste, but I like it quite bright. So we'll leave it at that. Um, just a little trick when you're processing color in skies. If you go to the color tab here, and you just select the blue color. Watch what happens to the sky as I drag the luminance slider down. Now the sky gets darker that's in the blues and uh, as it gets darker it gets more saturated you can see here the reflections of the sky doing the same thing now I mean, we can push it a long way and see how far it goes and it starts to look pretty artificial so we just bring it back up until we see some of it looks think looks quite nice now we can use this little switch here to turn this the effects of this panel on and off so we can see what we've done now you can see there it's brought quite a lot more saturation and depth to that photo so I think I'll leave that with the darker color uh, now the greens over here, there's a sort of yellowish green. Uh, I like them, but they're a little dark. Let's see if we can tweak that. So we'll go to the green, and we'll increase the luminance on those and see how it looks. Yeah, not much effect. I think we're maybe not getting the right channel there. We'll try the aqua. No, it's not really having much effect. That's affecting the sky there. So perhaps we need to deal with that uh, differently. Just a neat little trick. If you double click on the name of something, it'll reset its value back to default, which is very handy. Alright, we'll go back to the basic panel now. Now, I like the overall tone of this image. I think the exposure is pretty good, but I think we can bring in a bit of detail, particularly up in the trees here. So let's try increasing the fill light just to see how that looks. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's bringing out the brightness a little bit. It's making things a little bit more even across the whole picture. But if you look at the histogram, you can see here there's not a lot of pixels clustered around the black end. Now, blacks are good because they make the image punchy. And we want a nice high contrast punchy image, particularly for the kind of subject we've got here, which is a really ragged, kind of rough, almost dangerous looking rock. And uh, having a punchy look will really help that. So let's drag the black slider up a bit and see what effect that has. 
Yeah, I quite like that. It's quite contrasty. Now, as you can see, what we're doing here is we've pushed that right up against the edge. So we're actually getting some black clipping in the shot. Now, I can't see just looking at it where that black clipping might be, perhaps down here in the shadows. But if you hover over this little triangle here, you can see all the little blue spots appear in the picture. That's where there's black clipping. Now, just looking at those blue highlights, I don't think there's any detail in those um, clipped areas that really need to be preserved. So I'm happy to leave that as is and uh, stay with the punchy image. Now I think we're getting pretty close here. I might just see how it looks if we do a little bit of uh, localized exposure adjustment. In fact, I'll change brightness rather than exposure to just preserve any highlights that might be in the area. Now the default settings are at 63 and uh, we'll use a fairly large brush and we'll just paint it through this area and have a look. Now obviously that's way too bright, but uh, we can see what area we're affecting as we're working if it makes it very bright. Now I'm just going to go back and just tweak that edge a little bit so we don't have it spilling over too far. It's going to have a little halo in the sky there if we don't take care of that. And I'm going to go back into here and we're going to change this down. Okay, now that's not nearly as bad. It's only 15, but have a look at the difference. You can see it's really brought that out just a little bit more. Yeah, I wonder if it'll look any better with any increased saturation on that. No, I don't, I don't think that works. So we'll, we'll bring the saturation back down again. Maybe leave it at seven. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close now. Um, it's usually at this point that I like to zoom in close and have a look at the details in the photo. Look for noise, look for any potential sharpening that could be improved. Uh, a great place to look for noise generally is in the sky. Now, if we go back to our details, you can see here that it was shot at ISO 160, which is a sweet spot for the Canon 5D Mark II, which is what I'm shooting at. That's uh, a very low noise level setting. Now let's have a closer look and see how it looks. Well, you may not be able to see it on the, um, the compression quality of the video, but uh, that looks pretty damn clean to me. I don't see too much noise there that's worth bothering about. As we pan around the image, we can see that uh, the noise is not really a factor. But I reckon we could probably inject a little bit of sharpness into this, particularly around these rocks here. There are a lot of details there that are a little bit mushy. So if we go to the detail panel, leave the noise reduction down, color is just at default, and let's increase the sharpening. You get a little preview window here, which is a 100% zoom of a part of the photo, which is kind of like what we've got over the full screen here. Now let's see if you can see the effect as I increase the sharpening. And what I'll do is I'll push it way out so you can really see the effect. You can see it's getting very, very crunchy there. It's a bit too much. So I'm going to bring it down. And that's not too bad. We can fiddle with the radius and detail a bit. Usually just the amount's enough. So I think we'll leave it there. Now, what we've done though is we've also increased the sharpening everywhere else. And some of the noise that was not visible before in the sky is coming out. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use the masking tool. Now what masking tool does is it, it sort of allows you to choose where the sharpening is applied. And as you increase the masking, it focuses on the edges, the contrasts, and applies the sharpening just to those. And we can see that if we press and hold the Alt key while we click and drag the masking slider. Now the white is where masking is not applied. So the filtering, the sharpening is applied. Now as we drag it to the left, you can see all of it is filtered. All of it is sharpened. But as we drag it to the right, the focus is kept on just the contrast, the edges. So everything else is masked out. So at 100%, only the very edges are actually sharpened. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit because I like all the detail on the rocks. And uh, that will mean that our sharpening is limited to those contrasts. Now, if we turn the detail panel on and off, we might be able to hopefully see the effect perhaps over here in these rocks. So this is on and that's off. Back on again. Yeah, we can see some change there, particularly in the trees here. Uh, turn that off and then on again. You can see they're a bit sharper. Um, before, when we decrease the um, brightness of the blue channel, incidentally, you can sometimes get problems with fringing around the edges of that area. It's a little bit of an issue there. It's not too bad. Um, if I wanted to, I could go through with a brush and desaturate that area, but I think it's not so bad that we need to worry about it. I like the effect of the blue sky as it is. And I don't think we're losing too much with this fringing. So there's our photo. Uh, we've done a bit of processing on it now, made it look a bit better. Now, if you want to see how it used to look, 
just go to the toolbar and we can bring up a comparison. And you can see on the left there is the original photo and on the right is after processing. As you can see, it's a lot more punchy, a lot more saturated. Maybe too far for your taste if you don't like it too saturated, but I, I love bright, colorful, contrasty images. So there's a before and after. I hope you found this uh, informative and entertaining and um, I'll hopefully do some more in the near future. So thanks for watching.